By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today is a Tuesday and that means we're back at Four Horsemen Popper at the tournament that we held right here on Timmy Talks. We have reached the top 16. We're going to look at a match between Marco versus Alex. And before I jump in, just a small reminder what Four Horsemen Popper is. So this is the only tournament where you can only play with cards from the Four Horsemen sets. So that's Arabian Nights, Legends, uh, The Dark, and of course Antiquities. And you can only play with commons from these sets. So only Popper cards. Now, no cards are banned, no cards are restricted. So it's all game. And if a card has been reprinted later as a common, you can play them in these decks. Now today, as I said, we've got a top 16 match. We have a deck called Fully Altered because it's, hey, Fully Altered, it's blue and black. It's piloted by Marco and he is taking on Alex and Alex is playing with the deck that he's called Burning Junkyard. It's red and it's blue and it's looking like a powerhouse. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that if you wanna skip this introduction, if you wanna skip the deck deck, maybe go straight to the games, all you have to do is check the description below and there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games. You can also check the description below for more information about the rules and also a link to the tournament website where you can see all the deck photos. So if you're interested in this format, check out the tournament website. It is pretty interesting. Okay, and now that you're all informed on that, we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm gonna start with the deck of Marco, fully altered. And here we see the deck of Marco. So it's blue and black and it is fully altered. And he's done a really, really awesome job. And he's done something that I don't see that often. When I think of an altar, I think of Ponza Pens. I think of, you know, just go go at it. And there are a lot of super talented altars out there. I love altars, by the way. Um, but he's done it slightly different. He's done it by printing out the pictures very small. And like, I guess he did a lot of cutting sticking it on an inner sleeve and making it fit exactly, then putting the card in and then putting a sleeve over that. So making sure that it all stays fit and that you can shuffle it without any problems. Now here you see a picture of the process. Now I think you've done a wonderful job and this must have cost you so much time and I really, really respect it. And I, I just love looking at your deck. So just a big compliment to you, Marco. Now, when we look at the cards themselves, we kind of see that black is the main color and blue is the added color. And I guess, you know, one of the things that makes blue so strong are the flyers. In this case, the Azure Drake, one blue and three, a card from Legends, a two, four flyer, which is absolutely a powerhouse in this format. I mean, four toughness is so hard to get rid of and flying is really good evasion in this Four Horsemen Popper tournament. Now he's also playing with a card, I find that quite interesting, Four Gaseous Forms. And Gaseous Form, it's a card I'm personally not a big fan of because it gives your opponent a really good blocker, right? It's an en enchant creature for one blue and two that says uh, your creature just doesn't deal any damage anymore. But I mean, it can still block. It's like if you put it on a flyer, it's got like a, a really good, basically an invincible flying wall. I guess, I mean, I, you probably thought about it and it is a good card in the sense that, you know, it takes out uh, a creature. So, I mean, that's always a good thing. You don't want to die. So, you know, it takes out a creature. A creature can no longer deal any damage anymore. So, so that, that's pretty good, I guess. And in this format, it's really difficult to get rid of enchantments. Um, almost impossible. I mean, he needs a miracle worker, I believe, from the dark to get rid of enchant creatures. So that's not gonna happen in this matchup. So every gaseous form that hits the board is gonna stay there, making it, of course, a much better card than in other formats. Then we also see four Kumbach Witches, which go together quite well with the gaseous form, by the way. Kumbach Witches, a card from Arabian Nights, two black to cast for a 1-3 creature. You can tap it to deal one damage to any target, and then your opponent can deal one damage back to any target. So um, that's not a problem for the Witches because it's got three toughness and there are only four creatures in the deck of Marco that have one toughness. Those are the Walking Deads, but I guess the Walking Deads can be regenerated for one black. So that shouldn't really be a problem. Now, um, I talked already a little bit about enchantments and it is quite hard to get rid of enchantments. Now he's playing with four Oubliettes and Oubliette is an enchantment from Arabian Nights, two black and one, and you can use it to basically exile a creature. As long as Oubliette's in play, the creature you target with it is exiled. Now, um, there is no disenchant in this format. There is no tranquility in this format. There is no chaos orb in this format. 
So Oubliette is gonna stick to the board. And maybe you're thinking now, okay, shouldn't they ban it or restrict it? Well, I discussed this with the inventor of the format. Xander came to me, he's a patron. He came up with this great idea. He's a great guy, by the way. Um, and we discussed it and he, and he said, you know what it is? You're casting Oubliette two black and one at sorcery speed. And what it basically does is it takes care of one threat. It is not overpowered, you know, if it only takes care of one threat. You've got a Swords to Plows here for one white, instant speed, that, you know, takes care of every, any creature, removes it even from the game, just like Oubliette. So that card is much more powerful. So we, we decided we don't think Oubliette is a problem. It's still a super good card, and I understand that Marco's playing with four of those. I also played with four of those. Um, and another card I'd like to talk about that might be a little bit better here in Pauper than perhaps in any other format is Fountain of Youth. Fountain of Youth, zero to cast for an artifact, two and tap to gain one life, a card from the dark. Um, the nice thing about this card is that, yes, it's slow, but it's one of the only ways to kind of gain life. And sometimes these games end up in a stillmate and just tanking life while the game is not going anywhere is quite helpful. And of course, it works quite well with the Kumbach Witches if you're on a ping plan. So that's, yeah, I mean, that's basically why I kind of wanted to discuss it. Um, obviously, I can talk about a lot of other cards. Maybe you're wondering, by the way, what that card is next to the Fountain of Youth. Uh, youth that's an Ashes to Ashes, two black and one to remove two, uh, I believe, non-black, non-artifact creatures from the game, Ashes to Ashes. And you got to take five damage. It's a card from the dark. Really good card in the format. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a closer look of the deck photo, which I'm sure maybe you want to, please check the description below for a link to the tournament website. And there you can find a nice deck photo of Marco's deck. It's really worth taking a closer look at, in my, in my opinion. Anyway, this is the deck of Marco. Now let's go and have a look at the deck of his opponent, the deck of Alex, Burning Junkyard. And here we see the deck of Alex, and um, it's called Burning Junkyard. It's blue, it's red, and I can already tell you red is just so good in this format. Because of one card, let me just start with the elephant in the room, Pyrotechnics. One red and four to cast for a sorcery that allows you to deal four damage any way you choose. So you can split it up any way you want to. And you may think it's not that good. Five mana sorcery, only four damage. Why not play a Fisher five mana instant speed removal? Well, the strength of this card is the fact that you can divide those four points of damage. I've seen a lot of players using it also against me uh, post combat. So after combat, when you know the blocks have been done, and there are already some damage on the creatures. You can usually kill two or sometimes even three or sometimes even four creatures with one pyrotechnics, especially when you're also playing in a deck with some kind of, you know, pingers like Brothers of Fire. You know, it, it, the card is really better than you think. And it, it, it's proven to be a powerhouse so far. So I'm really curious to see how good it is going to be here in this matchup uh, for Alex, even, even against... The, the, the creatures of Marco that have either regeneration or pretty good toughness, I still think it's going to be a good card. Now, um, he is playing with, with blue as well. And the reason that a lot of players play with blue is because of the Azur Drakes again and the ghost ships. I mean, that gives you a lot of powerful flying creatures for four mana each, right? There are two four flyers. It's super good evasion. So that what that is what makes blue so good. Uh, another card that's very helpful is Remove Soul. I mean, we are playing... Uh, popper here. So a lot of the decks, actually almost all the decks, almost all the decks, I think there's one deck, but almost all the decks rely on winning the game through combat damage. So all the decks will have a lot of creatures. That makes Remove Soul, of course, a lot better than again in any other format. And the fact that it's one blue and one makes it easy to cast. So Remove Soul is definitely a good card. Some other cards I'd like to highlight here are Fisher, the card that I discussed before. Two red and three for a card from the dark. What I like about this card is that it's instant speed. You don't see that often. It buries a creature, meaning the creature cannot be regenerated. So you can use it greatly against the ghost ships that we see here in the deck. Uh, he's not playing against ghost ships today, but there are a lot of ghost ships in this tournament and it works great against them. And you also have the option that it destroys a land. Now in other formats that destroy a land option is great. In this format, I don't think it's gonna use it that often, maybe against some kind of decks with the greedy mana base. Remember, you don't have any dual lands, so maybe you can kind of take out a color of your opponent, 
you know, if you time it right, if your opponent is unlucky. So I, I wouldn't rule it out, but I think 90% of the time you're going to you know, use it to destroy a creature. And again, I like that instant speed of this card. Now he's also playing with a lot of artifacts in this deck. And there's one card that I want to highlight that's Primal Clay. Like I said in the introduction, cards that have later been changed uh, to a common can be played here. And Primal Clay is a nice uh, example of this. I think it was in one of the Masters editions that it was downshifted to a common. I think the fourth Master something, I don't know the name of all these sets, but it was changed into a common. This was uncommon in Antiquities. And later when it was reprinted, it was reprinted as a rare. So it went from uncommon to rare, back to common. But anyway, you can play it in this format. What I like about this card is, is its versatility. You know, four mana to cast for a 3-3 three, three, a ground creature, just a vanilla, a 2-2 two, two flyer. I think that's going to be the most popular choice. Or a 1-6 wall. And sometimes the wall can be a good option as well, of course, depending on the deck that you're playing against. I think it's a really good card. Um, and... What I like about this, the artifact chunk of the deck, is that he's playing with uh, Orcish Mechanics and with Sage of Latinam, so he's got sec outlets for his artifacts later in the game. Um, another card, I guess the last card I want to point out here is Jalem Tome. Jalem Tome is played in almost any deck because it's simply the only way to kind of draw cards and filter through your deck in the entire format. You don't have Jalem Tome, you don't have Book of Rass, you don't have Brain Geyser, you don't have Ancestral Recall, you don't have these cards. So if you want to draw cards, it is super difficult in this format. Actually, Jalem Tome is, I think, the only card that makes that possible. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. But I think Jalem Tome is the only card that allows you to draw a card. Obviously, when you use it, you immediately have to discard a card. So it's not even card advantage. But it's really, really good because sometimes later in the game, you just have too many lands. So you can just dump your lands and get useful cards for them. And if it's early in the game and your mana screwed, you can use it to dump cards you can't cast anyway and find the mana you need to get back into the game. So either way, it is a very good card and, and I think it's going to be very important for Alex in this matchup. I believe that Marco is playing one as well, but I think it's in the sideboard and not in the main. Yeah, I, I think it's in the sideboard, but I could be wrong. Anyway, we discussed the deck of Alex, Burning Junkyard. We discussed the deck of Marco, Fully Altered. That means we're ready to dive into this top 16 match. Who's going to win? Marco with his black and blue Fully Altered deck or Alex with his beautiful uh, Burning Junkyard brew? Let's find out. Game number one of the Four Horsemen Popper Tournament. Top 16 match between Marco and Alex. Marco is playing his Fully Altered deck, Black and Blue, against Alex who is playing um, Junkyard, and he is playing with a uh, blue and a red deck. So let's take a look. Let's see who gets to start in this matchup. It looks like it's Marco starting with a Basic Swamp and a Pass Turn. So he's got six cards in hand. Now you can see that on the dice, on the Timmy Talks uh, patch there. And uh, let's see what Alex can do. Ooh, he's got to turn one play. There we see a Brass Man, 1-3 creature from the Arabian Nights expansion. This is a revised copy. And when it attacks, you have to pay one during your upkeep to untap it. But that's looking pretty good. You can start dealing some damage. And there we see a Fountain of Youth by Marco. So, um, yeah, that's basically going to negate any damage done by the Brass Man. But still, I mean, I would still attack, right? Because then at least Marco doesn't gain a life. So, um, Fountain of Youth, zero to cast, two and tap, gain one life. It's an artifact from the Dark. And let's see what Alex can do. We're playing an island. Maybe he wants to keep this open. I believe he plays with Remove Soul, the counterspell from Legends. He's going to attack for one here. Marco dropping to 19. But remember, he can gain a life again with that Fountain of Youth. And there we see Alex. Oh, this is aggressive. Playing a Chain Lightning. So he's playing very aggressive here. I'm kind of surprised. There we see Marco gaining a life, going to 17. Does that mean that Alex just has a lot of... Chain Lightning's in hand. Perhaps he does. I wonder if Marco is going to play out a creature. He is playing with Kumbach Witches and also the Walking Dead. Tapping two black here. There is a Spirit Shackles. Ooh, that is quite interesting. So Spirit Shackles is an enchant creature. And uh, it reads, put a minus O minus two counter on target creature every time it becomes tapped. And the counters remain even if the enchantment is removed. So 
Yeah, that kind of makes it difficult for Alex to use the Brass Man here. And I see that Marco has also played a Desert, so Desert can deal 1 damage to target creature after damage is being dealt. It's a card from the Arabian Nights, and there we see an Onulet. 3 to cast for a 2-2 two -two creature. When it dies, you gain, I believe, 3 life, an artifact creature. Plays a little part in the lore of the Brothers War, by the way. A very good novel to read if you're interested in, uh, in lore of Magic the Gathering. There we see the Lesser Werewolf. What an interesting card this is. A card from Legends, a 2-4 creature. I didn't really discuss that card. Um, let me see if I can kind of find it here. The Lesser Werewolf. It is 2-4, uh, like I said. You can pay 1 black and a Lesser Werewolf gets minus 1, minus 0 until end of turn. Put a minus O, minus one counter on target creature that blocks or is blocked by the werewolf. So uh, that's quite interesting. And that actually works together quite well with the demonic torments and the ga gaius forms, or gaseous forms, I should say, that we have in the deck of Marco. There's an attack, by the way, by the Onulet. Is he going to block or is this kind of a trap by Alex? Does he have, for example, another chain lightning in hand to kill the lesser werewolf? And Marco is saying, no thank you, he's just taking the damage, going down to 15. Alex tapping 4, are we going to see an Azur Drake or a Ghost Ship? Okay, there is a Ghost Ship. 2 blue and 2 to cast for a 2-4 flyer, 3 blue to regenerate. And those 2-4 flyers can be quite good in this matchup. Alex can kind of fly over the Lesser Werewolf. But remember, Marco is also playing with a full playset of Azur Drakes in his deck. The 2-4 flyer from Legends for 1 blue and 3. But for now, Marco doesn't have... Oh, there's blue mana. I want to say he doesn't have islands, but here's the first island for Marco, so that's pretty good. I'm also kind of expecting Marco to maybe play another, like, enchant creature to take out the ghost ship, because he's playing with four gaseous forms, spirit shackles, and demonic torment. Tapping three here, there's the demonic torment. So demonic torment is a card also from Legends, one black and two to cast, that reads, target creature deals no damage during combat and creature cannot attack. So the creature can still block, but it cannot attack. And I'm starting to understand, Marco, what you want to do with the lesser werewolf in your deck. And I apologize because during the deck deck, I didn't discuss lesser werewolf and I didn't see it. So I'm sorry. Lesser werewolf, of course, doesn't care uh, if the creature no longer does damage or takes damage or whatever. Um, as a matter of fact, it likes it because if it doesn't take any damage, it can use the, that ability to put minus O, minus one counters on the creature that blocks the lesser werewolf and that way kind of slowly dying, uh, or sorry, killing that specific creature. So this kind of works together quite well with Demonic Torment and Gassy's form. That's very interesting, uh, Marco. We see Alex here, by the way, playing land number five, tapping all the mana here. There is a Pyrotechnic, so dealing four damage probably to the lesser werewolf. And the Lesser Werewolf is a goner here. And that kind of opens up the board here for an attack. So there's the attack for two. Remember, the Ghost Ship cannot attack because of the Demonic Torment. And of course, Marco is gaining a life as well. So Marco's on 14. Alex is still on 20. And only two cards in hand for Marco, though. Also two cards for Alex, it seems. Going to draw card number three. I mean, Marco needs a blocker. This actually works as well, the second desert. That means that if Alexander attacks with the Onulet and, uh, and Marco takes the damage, he can then use the desert to kill it. But I guess he can also block it here, playing an Azur Drake, the 2-4 flyer from Legends. And that Azur Drake is looking pretty solid here, at least as a blocker. Remember, the Ghost Ship can still uh, block. It just cannot attack. So the Ghost Ship can still kind of block the Azur Drake if Marco chooses to attack with it. Let's first see what, uh, what Alex can do. He is a little bit in the tank here. Discussing the ghost ship. Unfortunately, he cannot attack with it. But like I said, he can still block with it. He can still regenerate it. The only let is a 2-2. Two -two. It looks like Alex is going to tap here. 2 red and 1. And there we see a Brothers of Fire. So a 2-2 two -two creature from the dark, you can pay 2 red and 1 and deal 1 damage to any target, but you also take 1 damage for that. And here we see Marco slowly gaining life again, crawling back up. And this is the annoying thing about playing against the Fountain of Youth when your opponent has it and you're kind of in a standstill. All that damage that you were able to inflict him earlier is kind of, you know, 
nullified because of the fountain, right? It slowly, his life total ticks back up again. And that's quite frustrating, especially when you're like more on the aggro strategy. And I guess Marco is definitely more on the control strategy with his deck. Playing another Swamp. One card left in hand and passing the turn. I mean, I would actually kind of consider untapping the Brass Man. Why not? It's got the Spirit Shekels on it, but, it, you know, it can still untap. It doesn't have a counter on it yet. It's just a 1-3, and every time it gets tapped, it gets minus 0, minus 2, but you can still use it as a blocker. But maybe Alex has better things to do with the mana. Looks like he's kind of discussing things and going through the hand. Looks like he's going to tap two here. Okay, playing a Sage of Letnam. That is not too bad. Sage of Letnam, a creature from Antiquities. Uh, a one, two, you can tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So he can sacrifice, for example, the Brass Man. He's not using it anyway and get a card in return. That's not too bad. Ooh, Spirit Shackle, probably on the Brass, on the, um, the Sage of Latinum, I mean. Oh, so remember, whenever the Sage of Latinum gets tapped, it now gets a minus, oh, minus two counter. So this is pretty bad for Alex. He can only use his Sage once to draw a card and then it kills uh, itself because of the Spirit Shackles. That is bad. So that means to draw a card, he needs to lose two cards on the board. That's pretty bad. It looks like he's going to do it, though. I mean, I guess there are two creatures he can miss. And I mean, you know, Marco is losing two spirit shackles. That's a way to look at it as well. So he still nets one card more. So I, I understand this move here by, by Alex. I mean, he's got, he's got blockers for the Azur Drake in the form of the Ghost Ship. He doesn't really need the Sage of Latinam or the Brass Man. And tapping, okay, untapping it again. And passing turn, okay. So this is really bad news for Alex. As long as it's a standstill, it's great for Marco because of the Fountain of Youth. And this bad news for Alex. There is another Fountain of Youth, so he now can net two life per turn. And that is going to go very, very quickly. Two cards in hand, it seems, and a pass. There we see a Fisher. Is he going to Fisher a Desert, or is he going to Fisher the Azur Drake? He's taking care of the Desert. I kind of thought that he would do that. That is going to open up the board for him. If he can now get rid of the Azur Drake, he can start dealing some serious damage. Does he have another Fisher or a Pyrotechnics? That would be ideal for Alex here. And it's so funny because I mentioned in the deck deck that you probably would use Fisher only... Okay, there's an attack. Let's first focus on this attack. Attacking with the Onulet. He's blocking on the Azur Drake. So he's going to gain 3 life, I believe, from the Onulet. Going to go up to 23. Oh, 22. Okay, 2 life. And is there going to be a Chain Lightning? There's the Chain Lightning. So he's going to kill. Or is there going to be some kind of counter spell here? Or another way to kind of save the Azur Drake? So he's going to kill the Azur Drake here with this strategy. And that's exactly what Alex wants to do, right? This is great for him. Now he's kind of opened up the field. There is another Ghost Ship. Ooh, I wonder what Marco can do. At least he can net two life, go back up to 18. I mean, it's going to take a long time to kill Marco because of those two Fountain of Youths. But for now, it's looking really good for Alex. Tapping three here. There we see a gaseous form on the Ghost Ship. So that means the Ghost Ship just doesn't do any damage anymore. It doesn't take any damage. It doesn't deal any damage. It's like a flying ghost. Which makes sense because it is a Ghost Ship. But I mean, it's a flying gaseous form. So Alex can now at least attack with the Brothers of Fire. And Alex kind of inquiring about the gas he's form and how it works. So he can attack for two. I mean, that's something. 
So he's going to put Marco on 16, but of course he's got the Fountain of Youth, so he's going to gain some life. At least one, he's got three mana open. And there is a Brass Man. And he gains one life, of course. Couldn't get two because he only had three mana instead of four, but he goes back up to 17. And this promises to be a long matchup, man, because this is tough. Marco playing four Gassius Forms, four Spirit Shackles, I believe three Demonic um, Torments. So, oh, there we see a Remove Soul countering the Kumbach Witches. This is great for Alex. This is a great turn. There we see another Gassius Form, though, probably on the Brothers of Fire. Ah, oh, this is so tough. And this is where, for example, a card like Boomerang would be really good against this deck of Alex. So there we see an untap here by Alex. So he's got three creatures he cannot use. He only has the Brass Man that can deal some damage and only one measly point that is Marco dropping to 15. But Marco has run out of cards. And Alex passing turn here. I'm not quite sure how many cards Alex has in hand. I believe one, maybe two at most. And Marco now is one, just drew that one. Looks like he's gonna play it. Okay, and there's, this is hard to see because of the art, but I think it's another Demonic Torment. So that means that Alex cannot attack with the uh, Brass Man. Oh, this is wonderfully annoying. That's just amazing. Oh, and now he's gonna use the Brothers of Fire to deal one damage to Marco and also one damage to himself. Kind of trying to keep Marco you know, preventing Marco from going up too quickly with those Fountain of Youths. If Alex can find a second mountain, at least he can deal two damage per turn. There's a red and a blue being tapped. There's a Sage of Latinam. That is nice, because then he can sack the Brass Man for a card. There we see two black being tapped in response. Oh yeah, for a life gain, of course, by Marco. So he's going to go back up to 15. He's in top decking mode. One card in hand now. And he's just gonna pass. This is good news for Alex. At least he can use the Sage once. He's gonna use the Brothers of Fire again. So he's gonna go to 19, putting Marco on 14. Remember, Marco is enough mana open to gain life with the Fountain of Youth. I wonder if he's gonna attack or use it to draw a card. Sage of Latinum is a 1-2, so it cannot be killed by the desert there on the side of Marco. Okay, yeah, he is sacking the Brass Man. That is understandable. So that means a card for Alex found a second mountain. Now he can deal 2 damage with Brothers of Fire. All that basically does is also dealing 2 damage to himself every turn and just making sure that Marco doesn't gain more life. But, I mean, this is really tough. There is another desert. Oh, man. The deck of Marco is tough. And he's dealing two points of damage now. He's going to go to 17. And Marco, it seems, is now in 16. No, he's going down to 14. Okay. I'm not quite sure what these players are talking about at the moment. So the way this card works is two red and one, deal one damage to any target and you take a damage. So Marco is using the ability twice, dealing two damage to Marco and two damage to himself as well. And the deserts are tough or else Alex could have attacked with the Sage. It's a one-two, but now he can't. Does he have another Fisher though? He's got an Azure Drake, maybe even better. So the next turn he can start attacking with the Azur Drakes. Marco going back up to 16. Yeah, this is really, this is really a tough deck that you constructed here, Marco. And I really like the way how you want to use a lesser werewolf in this strategy. I think it's super cool. 
And Alex kind of has to battle through it. There we see an Oubliette, probably going to be on the Azur Drake. No, it's going to be on the Brothers of Fire. Interesting. And he's going to use it one last time. So he's going to drop to 16, Marco to 15. Does that mean, oh, he's got another answer for the Azur Drake. He's going to put a demonic uh, torment on the Azur Drake. Going to take care of that as well. But there's a little opening for Alex to at least deal one damage with his Sage of Latinam. And now I do understand the Oubliette on the Brothers of Fire. Tapping. Okay, there's a Jalum Tome. That's actually pretty good. Because what you want if you're Alex, you want to have gas. I'm expecting Alex to attack here with the Sage because there's an opening because Marco only has one desert untapped. So he's going to deal a damage here to Marco. Going to 14. There's a Chain Lightning. Wow. Alex is playing so aggressive here. He's doing everything he can to make sure that Marco doesn't go up in life with those Fountain of Youths. And here you can really see the strength of the Fountain of Youths because without those, you know, Marco would have been dead already. There we see Alex throwing away an Oasis and drawing a card there with the Jalem Tome. Doing that on end step, untapping everything here. So one card in hand for Marco now. Drawing a card for turn, so two cards in hand it seems for Alex, as far as I can tell. Seven mana, tapping four of those. Nope, tapping five of those. A Fisher, probably going to take care of one of the deserts. And then he can attack with the Sage, at least deal a point of damage. He's going to attack with the Sage, put Marco on 10. But remember, Marco has enough lands to kind of untap his fountains. There we see another Sage of Latinam. Okay, <laughs> we've got the Sage of Latinam beatdown going on by Alex. So he's going to gain life again with the fountains. Marco's going to go back up to 12, taking his turn. I wonder if he's going to play like Gaseous Form or something else on the Sages. He is not. This is quite, uh, quite an opening for Alex. He can attack with his two Sages, but remember, Marco still has two fountains. So basically, he takes two damage, gains two life. There we see a Jalem Tome activation. What card is he going to discard? And there's an island being discarded. This is what usually happens later in the game, and that's kind of the phase where we're at now, where Jalem Tome is great to kind of get rid of your excess lands. He's got one card in hand and passing turn, probably a land as well that he wants to discard later. Tapping three. Okay, there's a Gaseous Form. He's going to play a Gaseous Form. <laughs> Oh, the one of the Sages. Oh, that's just fantastic. Now, remember, he can still use the Sage's ability to sack an artifact to draw a card. It just deals no more damage anymore and doesn't take any damage anymore. So he's going to draw a card and discard a card here with the Jalem. Exactly, discarding a land, a desert of his own. Tapping two here, tapping three. And another Jalem. Interesting. Yeah, he can, of course, sack one of the Jalems. So he's going to attack with the Sage here. Can put Marco on 11. I'm kind of expecting Alex to sack. Ooh, deciding not to, deciding to keep one of the... Uh, he could have sacked the tapped Jalem to draw a card immediately. Deciding not to. There is a Walking Dead. So a 1-1 one, one with one black regenerate. Untapping everything. So now I'm kind of starting to doubt perhaps with Gassy's form, you cannot use the ability of the creature anymore. Nope, he can still use it. Just check the text on Gassy's form. Alex can still use his uh, Sage of Latinam that's enchanted by the Gassy's form, but I guess he prefers to have two Jalem Tomes. Being able to go through his deck quicker, that kind of makes sense as well. And I think the Jalem Tomes might be what kind of uh, gives the edge to Alex. But it's so tough here against this deck of Marco, especially with those two Fountain of Youths on the board. Every turn that you're not able to deal damage is just plus two life for Marco.
I wonder if Alex is going to use the Jalen Tome again. Trying to find a way out of this mess. So he's going to gain life, going to go up to 15. <laughs> oh, this is, this is just really bad for Alex here. There we see the Jalum activation by Alex on end step of Marco. Going to discard a chain lightning. Yeah, I think knowing Alex, he's probably looking for a few specific things that can get him out of here. Using the Jalum again, so he's really quickly going through his deck. And we can see those Jalum tomes working full swing. There is a brass man, so he just wants, wants to get as, as many creatures as he can. Going to go through the graveyard, trying to look up. I know he plays with, I believe, does he play with two Brothers of Fire or only one? I believe he plays with two, so that means there's one still in his deck, because Brothers of Fire would be quite good. There we see another Walking Dead being played, by the way, by Marco. And he's going to sack the Brass Man to one of the Sages to draw another card. So Marco on 17, right? Every time he doesn't deal damage, he's going to go back up. I think if you're Marco, or sorry, if you're Alex, you're probably looking for more Flyers. Remember, he's playing with, I believe, a full playset of Azure Drakes and a full playset of Ghost Ships. Tapping four. Are we going to see, oh, a Primal Clay. So we can turn that Primal Clay into a 2-2 Flyer. Primal Clay, a card from Antiquities. This is a copy from Revised. It comes into play as a 3-3 creature, a 2-2 Flyer, or a 1-6 Wall. And of course, he's going for the 2-2 Flyer option. Flying is great evasion in this format. Marco playing with no flying creatures at all. But look at the life total of Marco. He got back up to 19 again. I mean, this is just great for, for Marco. Oh, an Oubliette. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. And in, in response, at least Alex can sack the Primal Clay, getting a card from it. That's actually pretty good. But this, is, this must be so difficult for Alex here playing this game. And Marco, please let me know in the comments below what's been the longest game that you've played in this tournament. Because your deck looks like it takes a long time. There is a Ghost Ship by Alex. Draw a card, discard a card here. With the Jalem Tome activation. There is another Mountain. At least with the ghost ship, he can start attacking. And Marco's gone up to 21. Unbelievable. There's a swamp and a pass. And there we see another activation with the Jalem Tome. Discarding a desert. Drawing a card for turn. There is an attack here by the ghost ship. Marco dropping to 219, but of course he can gain the life back again. Ooh, this is interesting. Orcish, um, uh, what's, what's the name again of the card? Uh, I talked about it. It's, you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact, and then um, it, you can deal two damage to any target. So I'm just going to look up the card here real quick for you guys. In the meanwhile, we see Marco netting some more life. So it's an Orcish Mechanics. Yeah, I knew it wasn't Orcish Artillery. It's an Orcish Mechanics, three uh, to cast, one red and two, and it's a 1-1 one, one creature. There's another Walking Dead. That doesn't really matter for Alex, though. So Alex looking at his library and like, oh, it's getting pretty thin. Maybe Marco's going to win this because Alex is going to deck himself? So Alex untapping everything here. I mean, what Alex can do here is, of course, attack with the ship. 
putting Marco on 19, but then again, you know, Marco can gain the life back again with the double fountain. He can start using the Orcish mechanics to throw some artifacts to Marco. There we see a Pyrotechnics. Interesting. So he's going to deal four points of damage to Marco. One of the things he could have done is deal three points of damage, one point of damage to the walking uh, uh, dead each, forcing Marco to regenerate them. Then they tap themselves and then attack. But he doesn't really have that many creatures on the ground anyway. So I think this is a better decision. Marco dropping for life, but of course gaining life again. There we see a Spirit Shackles probably on the ghost ship. So Spirit Shackles means every time the ghost ship gets tapped, it gets a minus O, minus two counter. Throwing the Oubliette here to the life total of Marco is going to drop to 15. And Marco uh, also gaining two life from the Oubliette using the, uh, the Jailing Tome here to find some more weapons. I think if you're, if you're Alex, you just want to have more flyers. And he's tapping three. Okay, there is another Onulet that he can throw at the face of Marco. There is an attack. So now the ghost ship becomes a 2-2 two -two flyer. What an interesting match so far. Tapping four. Oh, five even. A pyrotechnics. Ooh, Marco's getting dangerously low. He's under the 10 life again. But of course, he's going back up with the double fountain, going back up to 11. I think Alex can still throw the Onulet, then he would go back to 9. Oh, that is tough. He's probably going to play it on the mechanics. So in response, Alexander is going to use the mechanics one more time. This is so tough. I think Alex can still very, very, very likely lose this because of decking himself. But I understand why Alex is doing it. Because if he doesn't do it, he's going to lose by decking himself anyway. Because Marco will be on so many life. Wow, this is so difficult. So Marco... Uh changing the life totals here. Alex back to 20, but that doesn't really matter in this matchup. Marco's still on nine, you know, I mean, this is not really going anywhere. Or at least not fast enough, I believe, here for Alex. I mean, that library is looking very, very thin. Drawing a card for turn. Again, using the Jalem Tome. Playing the Brothers of Fire. So this is the second copy he's got in his deck. Okay, this is something. He can put some pressure on. Oh, it's just so tough. But now Marco's going to gain two life from the Fountain of Youths. He's going to go back up to 11. Exactly. And pass the turn. Alex can deal one damage with the Brothers of Fire, putting Marco on 10. There is the Walking Dead number four. It is quite nice here to see all the four beautiful altars next to each other. That is just super cool. One card in hand for Marco still. Yeah, he's going to use the brothers. He's going to drop to 19, deal one damage to Marco. Marco's going to go to 10. Exactly. And he's going to use the Jalem Tome. All of this happens on hand step. Oh, he's going to sack the Tome to draw a card. Okay, that's of course also a possibility. I mean, at the end of the day, Marco is still on 10. You know, Alex is trying and trying and trying, but it's, it's just not enough. Tapping four. Are we going to see another flyer? Primal Clay into 2-2 two -two flyer, I assume. So that is something at least that Sage should be untapped, by the way. It could matter because if then Alex plays something to get rid of the Primal Clay in response, sorry, a Marco plays something to get rid of the Primal Clay in response, Alex can tap the Sage to draw a card. 
But every time when Alex kind of gets close, you know, Marco has the great response. Tapping three. <laughs> oh, Oubliette. Oh, man. And again, of course, he's got... Oh, but he can sack it to the Sage, right? I'm a little surprised he's not sacking it to the Sage of Latinam here to draw a card, or at least using the uh, mechanics to deal two more points of damage. I guess he doesn't want to draw more cards. He's got four cards there, but it, it doesn't really matter for Alex whether it takes longer for him to die or not. He, he needs to find specific cards to win this. I think he's now going through his graveyard trying to figure out, can I still win this? Maybe the answer is no. So he's, he's counting his cards now. Can't really see how many turns he still has. I believe maybe four or five turns and then it's over. It's done. He's going to go through the graveyard again. I mean, Marco's on 10, right? If he can find some more flyers. And again, I am a little bit surprised that there was no response on that oubliette. He could have, for example, at least used his mechanics to do two points of damage. Why not? The marker will go to eight. And yes, he's got a fountain of view, so he goes back up to ten again. But still, it's something. So he's sacking it now. Sacking the little book to draw a card. So he's really looking for answers. Tapping three, tapping four. And there's another primal clay for two, two. Playing an island for turn. And of course, Marco's going back up again to 12. So basically, all the 2 2 flyer does is to make sure that Marco doesn't go up more points. And then he, I guess he can use the Brothers of Fire to actually deal some damage. There is a Kumbach Witches, I believe. Or is it a lesser werewolf? It's hard to see with the altars. I believe this is the Lesser Werewolf because he's tapped four mana for it. And he's dealing some damage with the Brothers of Fire. So Marco's now on 10. Probably going to attack for two. Going to put him on eight. Marco on... Sorry, Alex on 15. Only two cards there? Oh! Oh, brutal. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Okay, there's an Azur Drake. So that's another flyer. So he can attack for four points next turn if Alex doesn't do anything. That's not enough, by the way. But And he's got, of course, Brothers of Fire. Maybe. I mean, he can deal two points of damage with Brothers. That's kind of making sure that he doesn't gain life from the Fountain. So then he's going to basically stay on 10. Then he can attack twice for four. He's going to go to six. Let's first see what happens. So he uses double brother. So he's going to go to 13. He's going to draw a card. I believe this is only one more card after this. Right? He's going to attack. He's going to deal four points of damage. Mark is going to drop to four. He can use Brothers of Fire three times, putting him on one. Wow! He's getting so close. Maybe Alex can make it. And of course, in response of the life gain, Alex can also use the mechanic. So it's also important here for Marco to kind of find the right moment to gain life. And it looks like Alex is looking something up. Maybe he's looking up the ruling with the spirit shackles. I think you can still use... There we see his hair. <laughs> I think we can still, that, in my humble opinion, but I've been wrong a lot of times in the past, but I think Alex can still use the ability. So before the counter goes on the Orcish mechanics, the ability of the mechanics is already on the stack. But let me know in the comments below if I'm correct or not. It's tap, sacrifice an artifact, deal two damage. 
And the question here is, if you tap it, it gets a minus O minus two counter on it, so it dies immediately. So maybe then you cannot use it anymore. I mean, how often do you have a situation, in my defense for not knowing this, how often do you have a situation where you have a spirit shekels on an orcish mechanics? Looks like Alex is also looking this up. We see some more of his hair. Why not? I'm kind of too committed to this game that I don't want to quit commentating on you guys. I now want to see the outcome of this game one. This is just game one. And I've also speeded up this video, by the way. So I think they are discussing the situation. And now, of course, we don't know what the outcome of the discussion is. We'll just have to wait and see what the players are going to do here. So, you know, like I said, Alex can activate the Brothers of Fire three times. Marco's on four. He's got the two Fountain of Youth untapped. So on and step, he's going to use the double Fountain, go back up to six. Okay, gonna play the Kumbach, which is not quite, not very relevant at the moment. And then I guess we're gonna see Alex using Brothers of Fire three times, putting Marco on three. That's what I expect him to do. Exactly, putting him on three, also taking three damage himself. He's gonna go to ten. And no matter who wins this one, I want to thank Marco and Alex for this game. Last card here for Alex Tron from the library. Oh, this is so funny. So he's going to attack with the Flyers, right? That makes sense. So Marco needs to gain a life here. Okay, so he's going to gain two. He's going to go up to five. I, th I think he's going to die here. He's going to go to one. And then we see Brothers of Fire for the win. Brothers of Fire for the win. I think that's going to happen. What's in hand there for Marco? That's it, Brothers of Fire for the win for Alex. Game one goes to Alex here. Both players gonna dive into the sideboards. What an insane first game this was. Man, it was hard for me to follow. Please let me know in the comments below how that works with the orchestra mechanics and the spirit shackles because now I start to think that I might be wrong. So you tap the orchish mechanics and then it dies immediately because of that minus O minus two counter, and then you can no longer have the effect. I think that's the way it works, but please let me know in the comments below. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Alex. Both players are now gonna go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to start here, and uh, man, what can we expect here in game two after that thriller of a game one? Marco on the play, of course, after losing that one, starting with a basic planes, passing turn here to Alex. Can Alex find a turn one Brass Man again? Looks like he can, just passing turn after casting that Mountain. Second Swamp by Marco. No Kumbach Witches. He is playing with a full playset and a full playset of Walking Dead. We don't see either of them. So it's Alex's turn again. Second Mountain. No Blue Source yet for Alex or for Marco. There we see a Blue Source for Marco. Just passing turn. So both players taking it easy here. A slow start for both of them. There is the first island for Alex, but just a pass as well. And there is a desert for Marco, and there is the lesser werewolf, so the 2-4 creature from Legends. So Marco may be able to uh, put some pressure on the life total of Alex. Let's see if Alex can... Cast a creature as well. If he finds a second blue, he can start casting his ghost ships and hazard drakes. Ooh, interesting. Is that chain lightning? Oh, it's on the life total of Marco. So he has no intention of killing the lesser werewolf. It does have four toughness, but I thought maybe he's going for double chain. And Alex missed a land drop here. That is interesting. And he's going to drop to 18. Damage taken from the lesser werewolf. Looks like Marco's going to cast something else. There is an hazard drake, 2 4 flyer from Legends. So next turn, maybe he'll have to take four points of damage. Oh, but we see 
Ooh, what's the name of this card again? I believe, is it, it's not active. Is it active volcano? Yeah, it's active volcano. And uh, it's one red, it's destroy target blue permanent or return an island to hand. In this case, of course, destroying the Azure Drake. There we see a primal clay. He could go here for a 3-3 creature or a 1-6 wall or a 2-2 flyer. It looks like he's going for the 2-2 flyer because of the two that's on there. We'll just have to wait and see how Marco... I mean, if Alex is blocking this... Exactly, he's not blocking, so I guess it's a 2-2 flyer. So Alex dropping to 16 here. And, okay, there we see a Spirit Shackles, which is ideal, of course. That means if Alexander just attacks once, it gets the minus O, minus 2 counter and dies. So Spirit Shackle on the Primal Clay. There we see another blue 5 mana now for Alex. Marco kind of stuck on mana there, by the way. He's on four still. Okay, there's an Orcish Mechanics. That's actually not too bad, because then he can just at least sack the Primal Clay to the Mechanics. And another Chain Lightning to the face of Marco. Marco dropping to 14. And of course, Alex is in a hurry after seeing all those who have Fountain of Youths in game number one. Doesn't want to have another game like that anymore. So next turn, he can use the Mechanics to throw the Primal Clay at Marco. He will drop to 12. There we see an Oubliette though, so that's not going to happen. Oubliette imprisoning the Orcish Mechanics and an attack for two. So I guess Alex is going to drop here to 14 or is he going to chump block? He is going to chump here. Remember, Alex is only playing with one Orcish mechanic, so he kind of knows that that line of play is out of there. Of course, he does play with, I believe, two or three Sages of Latinam, so that could have been a reason to kind of keep the Primal Clay around. Tapping four, okay, playing an Azure Drake. I think personally I would have taken the damage and I would have kept the Primal Clay around also because you can now have a double block. But of course it's kind of easy for me to save from this position. Also not knowing what's in hand of Alex. So Alex taking more damage, gonna drop to 14. That Lesser Werewolf is doing a lot of work. Taking out a Primal Clay and dealt six points of damage. Lots of value here. There is, I believe, another Spirit Shackles on the Azure Drake. And Alex is going to untap. Tapping two blue here, it seems, and a red. Ooh, an anti-magic aura. So that means all the enchantments fall off as soon as he casts it on there, I believe. Wow, this is fantastic tech here by Alex. This is, of course, another way to destroy enchant creatures. So it's not just a miracle worker. I didn't think of that. This is so cool. Anti-magic aura, I believe, coming from the sideboard. And this is a great protection for, for Alex and a big problem for Marco. So Marco now on 12. But this is really problematic for him because he can no longer cast any of his enchant creatures on the Drake. So the best defense for him is actually playing a flyer himself. He's probably first going to attack with the Lesser Werewolf, putting Alex here on 12. I wonder if Marco can find something. There's a Kumbach Witches. I mean, you know, Alex on 12, as long as Marco can simply deal more damage than Alex can, he's also fine, of course. But Alex has access to red, and that's, that makes Alex more dangerous, in my opinion, here. He's untapping with his 2-4 flyer, with his anti-magic aura. There's a mountain, 6 mana he's got available now. Tapping 5, are we gonna see... Ooh, there's a pyrotechnics probably on the life total of Marco here, or is he gonna... Ooh, he's going to kill the lesser werewolf. I'm a little bit surprised. Attack here by Alex. Marco dropping to 10. I mean, looking at how Alex was playing this game, I was kind of expecting him to maybe just go for full 4 damage on Marco, putting him on 8, then attacking. But I guess it's putting all your eggs in one basket, though, because then if Marco finds a way to deal with your Azure Drake, you're nowhere. Yeah, this is sweet. That's the altar there. Ooh, Artifact Blast! 
Oh, wow! Another, oh, what's the name? It, it counters instance. It's, it's one blue and one from Legends. Wow, what a counter battle this is. What an excitement. Wow, so both players kind of boarding in those counter spells from the sideboard. And they're discussing the altar. So you can see the Timmy Talks logo on there. And uh, that's actually me on the side. So uh, thank you, Marco. <laughs> very cool. It's very weird to see yourself on a card, but I like it, man. Thank you for doing that. It's beautiful. And uh, I'm honored. I'm honored. And here we see Alex untapping everything. So I'm happy it made it to the board. You were able to save it from the Artifact Blast. But of course, Alex is still in trouble, though. I mean, Marco is still in trouble because um, he's going to go to eight. If he can just find a flyer, there we see a brass man. Which is very good news for Alex because at least he can now block the Kumbach Witches. Every point of damage counts. So we see Alex on 11 right now, Marco on 8. Tapping 2, there's another Kumbach Witches. So he also has the Desert now, right? So if Alex attacks... Marco can use a desert to deal a damage and then two Kumbach Witches dealing three damage in total. So he only misses one more point of damage. And then he can actually kill the Azur Drake. Looks like Alex is a little bit in the tank. No, he is untapping. I thought maybe he wanted to respond still on the Kumbach Witches. Untap and draw. There's an Oasis. Okay, that kind of helps because Oasis can prevent one damage to a creature. So he can prevent the damage from the desert, which is, you know, that's kind of flavorful, isn't it? You're in the desert, you take a damage out of heat, but then, oh no, I don't, I find an oasis, I'm refreshed again. I kind of like that. It's cool lore. So he's attacking again, and of course, Alex is pointing out his winning card here, the anti-magic aura, or at least the seemingly winning card here for Alex, because he's not there yet. He needs at least three more turns. And Marco, of course, can start using his book to find a solution. Remember, he is playing with four Azur Drakes himself as well. There we see a Fountain of Youth. Okay. Oh, two Fountain of Youth. So this is going to buy him some time. Actually, he gains two life per turn because of the Fountain of Youth. And he also loses two life to the Azur Drake. So he's kind of back into it. There we see a Fisher. And, ooh, again, a Counterspell. Taking care of the Fisher. That is really good. So we see a lot of counter magic here in game number two, making it so interesting. I really love this card pool. And if you want to know more about this event, check the description below. Oh, ho, 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 look at that. Wow. Wow, amazing. So it's now a 4-6. He's going to attack. It looks like he's going to chump. He has to. Amazing. Unstable Mutation, of course, from Arabian Nights. Gives plus three, plus three, plus three enchant creature. And then every single turn uh, during your upkeep, you put a minus one, minus one counter on, in this case, the Brass Man. Wow. That means that next turn is going to be a three, five. And then, of course, Alex is going to attack as well. But I'm kind of expecting Marco to play Demonic Torment or Gaseous Form or something like that. Oubliette, of course, that's another option. So he's putting the Brass Man into the dungeon. And I guess, you know, for if you're Alex, you really want to put Marco in the uh, Pyrotechnics range. So you want to get him on four. But that's probably not going to happen because of the Fountains of Youth, though. Because he's now on five. Well... Because he played out that Oubliette, though, he can only gain one life. So he's actually going to go to four now. We see a tap of three. Brothers of Fire. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Marco is very close to getting kicked out of the tournament with his beautiful, beautiful deck. Top 16 match. Doesn't mean that Alex will continue to the top eight. I mean, he's not there yet. Marco only had managed to net one extra life. Going to go to four. And he's thinking, of course, what can I do? The problem for Marco is if he plays something out, then he probably doesn't have enough mana to use his Fountains of Youth anymore. So, you know, that's difficult. Even using his Jalem Tome means that he can only use his Fountain once. 
Tapping four mana here. Are we going to see an Azur Drake? Ooh, a Lester Werewolf. I think... I'm not sure if I would have done this play because the Lesser Werewolf simply doesn't block. Um, yeah, now do we see Brothers of Fire activation, by the way. The Lesser Werewolf doesn't have flying, so it cannot block. And because he plays the Lesser Werewolf, he cannot activate uh, the Fountain of Youths anymore. I think he's dead now, to be honest. I think Alex can attack, put him on one. And then he can use the Brothers. This is it. Wow, Alex, moving on. To the top eight, after game one, I thought, how is this gonna end? Are we gonna see a marathon match? But no, we did not because game two went a lot quicker, even though the start was kind of for Marco, I have to admit. But uh, to both players, Marco and Alex, thank you so much for this match. And I'm already looking forward to our top eight match next week, Tuesday. But first, let's kind of enjoy this match. Let's have a look at the, uh, at the decks here. Again, let's start with the deck of Marco. Absolutely beautiful, all these altars here. You've done a fantastic job and your deck actually is working really, really well. It's super tough to get through. And then of course, let's take another look at the deck of Alex, the winner of this match. Alex, well, well played. What a match this has been. Ay, 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 that game one, absolutely crazy. But that was in the past, this is in the now. Next week, Tuesday, we are going to look at a great battle between John Dittert with Desert Mechanics, taking on Tom Atwood, and he's playing with Burning Skies. And the winner of that match will continue to the semi-finals. So these are the decks, it's super exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Now, before you go, I would like to thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please like, comment, and share on this video. These three things are completely free and they really help Timmy Talks grow and move forward. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to old school. Please subscribe and ring that bell. And now that you've done all that, it is time for me to talk to you about the Timmy Talks Patreon page because yes, we have a Patreon page. So if you like what I do, please consider supporting me financially as well. And you can do that via Patreon, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. There's probably a link, an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card and that will take you straight to my Patreon page. And you can already become a supporter of the channel for just one dollar a month and for that dollar you get a lot back you get access to the timmy talks discord your name will be mentioned in the end scroll and of course you can join tournaments like this so what are you waiting for visit patreon.com slash timmy talks and now it's time to go to the end scroll and have a look at our amazing wunderbar fantastic patrons and channel members here we go Somebody can see.